वेलकम टू माई चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल शेयर दीडियो विद योर फ्रेंड सो दैट इट विल हेल्प दम टू We are going to solve Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 2 Extended 0580 Variant 22 February March 2019 Question number 17 onwards 17A Find the value of n when 5n is equal to 120 1 over 125 So this is an indice or an exponent question You should always remember that whatever base you have here this is called the base and you will have a number try to make 125 to the power of uh, 5 to the power of something so if you keep checking in the calculator you will get 5 to the power of 3 is 125 and uh, one other rule that you need to know is that when you bring powers from the denominator to the numerator or from the numerator to the denominator the sign changes so this will become 5 to the power of negative 3 and because the base are same they get cancelled and you will be left with n is equal to negative 3 you can watch my uh, video on indices i have solved a lot of past paper questions that will help you for practice part b simplify first thing is the power is negative you should look at so if the power is negative you want to make the power positive flip what is inside the bracket so we have 64 over m cube we are going to write m cube over 64 now our power is positive and other thing to remember is this power is for the numerator and the denominator so we can write m to the power of 3 One over three, and sixty-four. One over three. I hope you know that when you multiply the powers, if there's a bracket and you multiply the powers, uh, like you are supposed to multiply the powers, and when you multiply three, multiply by one over three, you're going to get one. So it's equal to m. We don't need to write m to the power of one. And sixty-four one over three. When you put in the calculator, you will get four. So that's our answer. Question number eighteen: A pipe is full of water. The cross section of the pipe is a circle radius two point six centimeter. Water flows through the pipe into a tank at a speed of twelve centimeters per second. Calculate the number of liters that flow into the tank in one hour. There are a lot of things that you need to consider in this question. First thing is that the cross section of the pipe is a circle, so you need to know how to find the area of the circle. then water flows through the pipe so how do you change how do you find the water flow water flow gives you the volume how do you find that you need to know this formula water flow rate is equal to area of the cross section multiplied by speed of water so using this water flow is equal to area of the cross section what is the area of the cross section pi r square because that is the circle multiply by the speed of water which is 12 cm per second we want to find for 1 hour so we multiply 60 multiply by 60 because we are changing it into hours so 60 multiply by 60 will give you Uh, sorry the answer multiply by 60 will turn it into minutes and then you multiply by 60 it will turn it into hours replace your r by 2.6 and put this in the calculator you will get 917445 and there are some decimals that you can ignore it this is what you are getting this is the water flow this is in a cubic centimeter to change the centimeter cubic centimeter into liters we need to know 1 liter is equal to 1000 cubic centimeter so if i want to change this into liters i have to divide it by 1000 
and we will get 917.445. We can round it to 917 liters. Next, simplify AB minus B square and A square minus B square. You need to know the difference of squares rule. If you have A square minus B square, it is equal to A minus B and A plus B. The numerator B is common, so we factorize it out and we are left with A minus B. There are two Bs here and one B here. We factorized the B out here and we are left with A minus B in the bracket. In the denominator, we have the difference of squares, so we are going to use this rule. A minus B and A plus B. The A minus B will get cancelled and you are left with B over A plus B. Question number 20 is a matrix question. Matrix is not a part of your syllabus from this year onwards, so we can skip it. Question number 21. Without using a calculator workout, 3, 1 over 8 divided by 5 over 12. You must show all your working and give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. It's a four mark question, very easy four mark question and quite often repeated. So you need to know it very well. To change the mixed number into improper fraction, we multiply the denominator with the number on the side and whatever answer we get, we add to the numerator. So 8 multiplied by 3 is 24, plus 1, 25. The number in the denominator stays the same. This is a divide, so we will write multiply. When we change the sign from divide to multiply, the number after the divide, we flip it over. So 5 over 12 will be written as 12 over 5. Remember that it is a 4 mark question. Don't jump into putting into calculator. We will do just some extra steps so that we get all the marks. 25 multiplied by 12. Just multiply the numerator first. Uh, you will get 300. And then 8 multiplied by 5 is 40. This, in the same way, put in the calculator. You will get 15 over 2. Now, in the calculator, Press shift and above the delete button there is an SD. Press that. So first you're going to press shift and then this button. And you will get the answer in a mixed fraction. You will get seven and a half. And suppose you want to change it into a decimal, just press this again and this will turn into a decimal. I hope you have understood that. Now moving, before I move forward, let's just move a little backward. We had three one over eight. If you forget or you don't remember or you want to check, did you change it in a proper way for, uh, to improper fraction? You can use your calculator. Press shift in the calculator and press the fraction button. When you do so, you will get three boxes then place your values here three one and eight so when you do that you will get 25 over eight so this is by using the calculator you can do and from changing to mix into improper you can use this method question number 22 is a speed time graph which shows the first 50 seconds of a journey. A, calculate the acceleration during the first 15 seconds. So we are going to find the acceleration by finding the difference in the speed. So 25 minus zero divided by the time taken. Time is 15, they already told us this. And this will give us 5 over 3. We shouldn't write the answer in a improper fraction. So using the method which I showed you now, you can convert it into mixed number, which will be 1, 2 over 3. Or 
you can write it as a decimal, which would be 1.666. It's recurring. The 6 is recurring, so you can round it to two decimal place. 1.67. Whichever answer you want, you can write, but round it correctly. Next, the distance traveled in the first 50 seconds. Whenever you are solving for speed time graph and finding the distance, we need to find the area under the curve. So the distance is equal to the area under the curve. So let's do that. We can see that it, the shape is a trapezium. So the area of a trapezium can be found by half a plus b times h. What is A and B? A and B are your parallel sides. These are your A and B. So let's write them down. Half A is 50 plus. What is this line here? 50 minus 15, which will give us 35. And the height is 25. That's it. You just put the whole thing in the calculator to get your uh, distance. 162.5 meters. 23. A is the point 23 and B is the point 7, negative 5. Find the coordinates of the midpoint of AP. This is our X and this is our Y. To find the midpoint, we use the formula x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So what are our x's? 2 and 7. So 2 plus 7 divided by 2 will give us 4.5. Now to find the y, we are going to use 3 plus negative 5 divided by 2. And we will get negative 1. So these are our points x and y, the midpoint of AP. Part B. Find the equation of the line through A that is perpendicular to AP. Give your answer in the form y is equal to mx plus c. To find the equation of the line that is perpendicular to AB, the first thing we will need to do is find the gradient. Using the formula which we used before, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That will give us the gradient. And what are our points? 2 and 3, that is the a. And b is 7 and negative 5. So the first is the y we write. 3 minus minus 5 over 2 minus 7. and you will get negative 8 over 5. This is the gradient that we got using the equation. If you wanted to find the equation of the line, we would have used this gradient, but that is perpendicular to AB. Because it is perpendicular to AB, we need to take the gradient and flip it over. So our perpendicular gradient is going to be we flip it over and we change the sign. So this is 8 over 5. We are going to write 5 over 8. This is negative. So this will be positive. Please make a note of it. And I have put up uh, videos for equation of perpendicular line and equation of lines. Do have a look at those videos to understand in more details. Now to find the equation of the line, we use the formula y is equal to mx plus c. Usually, when we want to find the perpendicular to a line, uh, we use the midpoint. We use the midpoint or the line it passes through. They have told us that it passes through a. So we have to use a as our x and y. a is x is 2 and y is 3. Gradient is 5 over 8 and x is 2 plus c.
this will give us five over four plus c move the five over four to the other side it will be negative and three minus this will give us seven over four so in this part of the question your job was to find c first we found the gradient second the perpendicular gradient third the c and now we are going to substitute in the equation the m which is 5 over 8 and the c which is 7 over 4 so that is your equation of the line question number 24 we have been given two triangles joined together and we need to find sr so this is sr we need to find two angles have been given and one side has been given and you want to find the second side in a question like this we will use the sine rule if two angles and one opposite side is given and you want to find the opposite side to the other angle we use the sine rule so let's write sr over the angle this is opposite opposite sine 53 is equal to this side which is 74 sorry 7.4 over the angle what is the opposite angle 97 so sine 97 don't put anything in the calculator now sr is equal to 7.4 sine 97 multiplied by sine 53 now you are ready to put everything in the calculator and you will get the answer 5.95 so SR is 5.95 centimeter. Moving on to the next part of the question, we need to find RQ. RQ is here and you have been given two sides and an included angle. And you want to find the opposite side. So two sides and an included angle is given and you want to find the opposite side. We use the cos rule. This is the cost rule to find the side. A square is equal to B square plus C square minus 2BC cos A. A square is our RQ, so RQ square. B and C, it can be any side here. So 7.4 square plus 8.5 square minus 2 times the value given to us, 7.4 and 8.5 is equal to sorry not is equal to cos a a is the angle opposite the sides we want to find so which is cos 26 this whole answer put in the calculator now you will get 13.94 but this is rq square what do we need we need rq so square root the answer 13.94 square root will give us 3.73 so therefore rq is equal to 3.73 centimeter this brings us to the end of this tutorial i hope i've been able to help you if you need help with any particular exam paper do mention in the comment section i will help you out thank you for watching